The internet has undeniably changed our lives. We use it to stay informed, to shop, as a tool for education, and increasingly in the wake of the pandemic, for work. But access to this essential resource remains extremely unequal globally. The African continent in particular lags behind much of the rest of the world in terms of connectivity, deepening existing inequalities there. Well, the spread of misinformation is also a major challenge in several African nations. For more on all of these themes, Nena Nukwanma joins us for Perspective. She is the chief web advocate for the World Wide Web Foundation. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Hello, everyone. Could you perhaps start by telling viewers about your missions as chief, uh, chief web advocate for the World Wide Web Foundation? Great, thanks for having me again, Erin. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Nena. I come from the internet. I'm the chief web advocate at the World Wide Web Foundation. As she has said, the foundation itself was founded by the inventor of the World Wide Web, Sir Tim Berners-Lee and Rosemary Lee. The reason the foundation was there, is still there, is the same reason the World Wide Web is there. We want to advance the open web as a public good and a basic right for everyone. So once you understand why the web was created for humanity, once you understand why the web foundation is there, then you can understand what I do as its chief web advocate. I do five things. I represent the ideals that I've mentioned. I carry voices from the local scene to the global scene and I bring voices from the global scene to the local scene. I listen. I consider myself as one of the public servants of the World Wide Web. So when people speak on the web, I listen. I read. I track. I follow people and events. I also advise governments, industry, users, organizations, and I support them and build partnerships, then I speak. Yes, like I do, I do media, I do global events. And that, in summary, is what I do as a chief web advocate. And I learn, I learn every day. And Ms. Nohanma, if I understand correctly, you've made improving women's access to the internet one of your main priorities. What link do you draw between digital inequality and gender inequality? Because the digital inequalities fall along the familiar lines of inequalities that we already know about. Gender, that is the difference between men and women, uh, the rural urban divide. We have found out in our research that men are 21% more likely to be online than women. That is on the global level. When you come down to places in Africa, in the least developed countries, that actually rises to 52% more. So when we now know that 2.9 billion, which is a third of the global population, has zero internet access, we find out that more women have no internet access at all. And we, we are living in this pandemic. We have seen that now access to the web is no longer a luxury. It is a lifeline. Um, I have been following your news. Everyone's been working online, like you said in the introduction. We've worked online, we've schooled online, we've done a lot of things online. We've heavily relied on the, on the web during this pandemic. And the work for women have increased. Now, how can we increase the work of people whose internet access is decreased? That is our challenge. And that there's no shortage of challenges, Ms. Nukwanma. More generally, the internet is less affordable across Africa uh, than anywhere else in the world. It has the lowest rate uh, of people using the internet, which you touched upon in your, in your response there. What do you think is the best way to address this? Now, um, we've always said connect, connect everyone. But connectivity alone is not enough. Um, what we found out is that people just think, oh, just give them basic internet access. That is not enough. And so we have been carrying the message of meaningful connectivity. I'll repeat that, meaningful connectivity. Meaningful connectivity is what allows me, seated in West Africa, to be interacting with you where you are via online means. It means that I have a right device it means I have broadband internet access. It means that I have the right speed 
and it means that I am skilled enough and this is affordable for me to do so. So it is really very important that we move from basic access to meaningful access. That means the access to the web, to the internet that allows me to be fully empowered, to be fully functional and be equal in power, in resources, in capacity with the global population. That is the internet that we need for Africans, but most importantly, for African women. And I want to change gears now a little bit and talk more generally, uh, despite comparatively lower rates of access to Internet, misinformation and hate speech are major issues across the continent. Social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, they've been slow uh, to moderate content across Africa that's allowed armed groups and, and authoritarian regimes to exploit these platforms. Uh, what are African governments doing in terms of legislative frameworks uh, to increase digital trust? That's a very important word because the future of the internet, the future of the World Wide Web, our digital future depends on the trust that we have on the system. And so about three years ago, we launched what we call a contract for the web because the inventor of the web himself looked back and said, no, this is not what I intended. And so we are bringing this message, not just to African governments, to everyone. Now, the contract for the web calls us to responsibility responsibility for government, responsibility for the industry, then responsibility for the users. You know what? It is not necessarily the equipment or the platform. They will do their part, but users also have to do our part, educate ourselves, be responsible web users, but government need to regulate. Government needs to restore this trust because we have um, outsource our security to the government. That is what a government is there for. It is its regal role to protect us as citizens. So whether it is offline protection or online protection, that is the, the role of the government. Now, has it been done? My question to you is, in Africa, do we have capacity to legislate? When we have capacity to legislate, do we have capacity to implement? When we have capacity to legislate and implement, do we have the basic knowledge and skills that is required for this to happen, either at the government level, at the industry level, or at the user level? So there are a lot of things missing. It's not enough to adopt a law and act. No, we actually need to have a whole of society approach to it. We call it the multi-stakeholder approach. And this is what we do sometimes with our tech policy design lab. We bring together everyone because the greatest mistake you can make in re regulating technology is to sit in your office, draft a law and adopt it. It doesn't work. It doesn't work because that's not the nature of the World Wide Web. The nature of the World Wide Web, the nature of the internet is for all stakeholders to be on board. So maybe that's why we've not had enough advances in this case because we've not collaborated enough. Okay, Ms. Nina Nakwanma, thank you so much. That's unfortunately all we have time for on the program today, but thank you very much for your detailed contributions to the program.